In this episode, we're going to be talking about how yoga doesn't pull. Really, in a practical sense, yoga does not train upper body pulling. And we're going to explore the anatomy and we're going to look at some poses and we're going to explore, you know, a, a counter arguments to this statement and how, while certain poses do technically train the pulling muscles and it does that matter, is that enough? We're going to find out in today's episode. Real quick, my name is Anthony Davis. This is Shapeshift Wellness, where we explore the science of fitness, yoga, and meditation. I do have educational courses that really explore this stuff in greater depth on my website, so go check that out. And if you like this kind of thing, please like and subscribe. Now let's learn about yoga and pulling today. So to start off, last week I released a video called Why You Need to Push and Pull. And it's exactly what it sounds like. The simple short version is that in order to have a well-balanced training uh, or exercise or physical activity program, basically if you just break it down and make sure that you do some pushing and some pulling in your upper and your lower body, you're gonna be you know, strong in all of the uh, necessary ways. At least that's going to be sort of a minimum uh, viable product for physical fitness. Um, yoga, however, which a lot of people are, you know, would make the statement that yoga is a complete uh, physical uh, fitness sort of activity and that you don't need to do anything other than yoga and you would be perfectly healthy. I would uh, <laughs> really argue against that. I would, uh, however... Uh, I would encourage you to do yoga if you love it. I love yoga. Yoga has amazing uh, amounts of benefits for many, many, many reasons. However, it has weaknesses. It has flaws. And one of those is that it does not adequately train upper body pulling muscles. So let's look at pulling. Let's look at the anatomy first. So if we look at the anatomy, what we see is that upper body pulling, largely speaking, is going to be involving the back muscles and also your uh, biceps. So your lats, your traps, your rhomboids, your rear delts, your levator, your biceps, okay? So all these things, if you were to pull a door open, then you are going to be using these muscles. Or if you were to do a pull up, you would be using uh, many of these muscles and especially your biceps in the case of a bull, uh, pull up or a chin up. So if we take this a little bit further and we look at, well, what are some really good ways to train pulling? So let's start off with, if you really wanna target these muscles, your lats, your biceps, your traps, your rhomboids especially, those kinds of muscles, if we, if we really want to train those, then what is the best way to do it um, and get the most bang for our buck? Well, pull-ups would be a very good way to do that. Any kind of rowing would be a great way to do that. Um, a rowing machine is fine. Uh, you could use uh, a barbell or dumbbells and you could do a bent over row. You could do an inverted row. So if you like body weight, you can simply uh, grab bands or a bar or something like this upside down and basically pull yourself towards the bar. This is different than pull-ups because pull-ups uh, tend to, especially depending on the, the grip, you might be able to get your biceps more um, and the inverted row is uh, it generally going to target more of your lats. So then if we look at yoga, what is the best we've got? And I don't think we really have anything good for pulling in yoga, but we do technically train our lats in a couple of poses. Um, down dog, depending on how you do it and where you press into, you could do it in a way that is a pulling activity, or you could do it in a way that is not a pulling activity. It depends. A uh, reverse plank, you could use your lats. So let's take that concept a little bit further here. Let's uh, add some arrows of directionality. So if you're in down dog like this individual and you are pushing your hands down into the floor, if you are pressing your hands down into the floor, then down dog becomes a pulling activity because your lats, their action is to bring your hands from an overhead position down by your side and then even back into what we call extension of the shoulder joint, the glenohumeral joint. So if you're pushing your hands down, then downward facing dog 
could become a pulling activity. Um, in order to do that, however, you have to resist with your hip flexors, otherwise you would be pulling yourself forward into a plank because if you really activate your lats, if you significantly activate your lats in downward facing dog, then uh, you will no longer be in downward facing dog by virtue of um, using the strength of your lats, which would pull you into a plank. So you cannot use your lats in a significant way in downward facing dog because if you did you would no longer be in downward facing dog um, next uh, let's look at a reverse plank this one's actually a pretty good one um, I think this does this is a good way to train your lats I think in yoga uh, or any kind of bo body weight activity so basically because you're you're pressing you're trying to slide your hands backwards and so that presses your heart and your hips up to the sky. And that is creating the action in the shoulder joint that we call extension, and that is the main function of the lats. In fact, you're even, if your fingers are pointing forward, you're even kind of internally rotating your shoulder joint, and that really targets the lats. So this would be a really good way to train the lats. If you wanted to get even more out of it and really train the lats, then you would want to take your um, shoulders, and uh, rather than stacking your shoulders directly over your wrists, you would want to actually offset it so you would have your wrists slightly in so your wrists would be more under your uh, thoracolumbar uh, junction basically the bottom of your rib cage so you would place your hands more like right here for this person and then your shoulders would be further back than your wrists and that creates a, a moment arm between your shoulders and your wrists where um, you have to use your lats more if you did the opposite uh, where your shoulders are in front of your wrists or your wrists are behind or further back like you're really and hyper extension of the shoulder joint, then you would be um, actually no longer using your lats uh, to in a significant capacity. You would be more likely to default to using your like anterior deltoids in that. It's weird, it, it flips because of where your shoulder is in relationship to your wrist. So if your uh, wrists are closer to your feet than your shoulders, then you're really doing a pulling activity, okay? So if you wanted to target that. Now, um, another uh, a viewer proposed this method in my last uh, video, and this I thought this was a good idea. Um, this is going to be sort of like an idea of self-imposed pulling. So basically, to start in downward facing dog, you're pressing your hands into the floor, activate your lats. And like I said, if you really activated your lats, then what would they do? They would pull you forward into a plank, or in this case, a chaturanga. Uh, and then an upward facing dog, if you kept pulling and pulling and pulling with your lats, and you were really using your lats, you would pull yourself into upward facing dog eventually. So why not take advantage of that? Fine. Press the lats and, you know, uh, press the hands into the floor, use the lats, activate them as much as you possibly can, and use that pulling um, inertia, if you will, create some inertia, and then use it to move forward into a play, uh, chaturanga, and then into an upward facing dog. So you could do this. However, I will point out again, this is a very, very low load activity because you are having to self-impose. The natural forces of gravity versus your body weight in this case, physics is not really on your side for creating a lot of force in the lats or in the, the pulling uh, muscles on the back in this activity. So this is not, in my opinion, a very good pulling activity, but it does accomplish a uh, sort of more energetic pulling um, motion. So you can kind of fake it, but it's not, in my opinion, a really significant way of training the lats. Now, what about the biceps in yoga? Do we train the biceps ever? Because all the poses I've mentioned before are, we can kind of fake some pulling, but it's really about the lats. What about the biceps? Well, some people have proposed that in Utita Hasta Parangustasana and, and Parangustasana here that you are um, using your biceps because you're trying to pull, you're trying to bend the elbow here and pull your foot towards your uh, chest here. Or in this case, you're literally grabbing your big toes and pulling your heart towards the floor. Uh, and here with bent elbows that you would be therefore using the biceps. And yes, that is technically true. However, there are a couple major problems with this. One is that if you you 
were pulling so hard that you were using your biceps in a, a genuinely significant capacity. If you were using, so if we wanna build strength, we have to use what we would consider uh, at least 70%, but more like 85% of your maximum uh, voluntary contraction. So uh, the hardest you could squeeze would be 100%. You need to be squeezing with at least 85%, um, really at least 70% to get any kind of significant strength gains in a muscle. So in this case, if you were squeezing with your biceps with 85% of your maximum voluntary contraction, then you would be really, really forcing yourself into a forward fold in a way that I would really question the safety of that practice. So generally, we don't want to force ourselves into uh, hypermobile poses. We want to use our active strength to get there. In this case, this is a way of forcing yourself incredibly deep, especially if you were using it in a, a capacity that is strong enough to really train your biceps. You would be, in my opinion, forcing yourself into unsafe ranges of motion. Um, so I, I don't think this is a good way to train the biceps, although you do technically use the biceps in this pose. And be, beyond that, I wouldn't even practice these poses, um, not the way that they're practiced in Ashtanga or other um, forms of modern postural yoga. I would much more like in Uttita Asta Parangustasana here, I would encourage you to try, you know, maybe you uh, grab the toe for a second just to see where your passive range is and then you let go of the foot and see how high you can hold it. Chances are that you drop the foot very significantly. Chances are you drop the foot at least, I don't know, 20 degrees probably, probably a lot more than that. Um, so it, that would prove that you don't have the strength to control that range of motion, in which case I would encourage you to train more of your active um, strength. And yes, you can hang out in your passive sometimes, but uh, if you're not trying to close the gap of active to passive, I have another video on that if you're getting confused here. So the point is hypermobility, uh, forceful hypermobility, don't do it. There's no reason to ever force yourself into anything and if you're using your biceps to do it, then that's a stupid uh, plan. Now, beyond that, let's look, this is the second problem, is if, even if we did, if we ignored the hypermobility aspect and we said, look, you know, we are using our biceps in both of these poses, that's definitely true. Um, the most we could possibly get out of this really in yoga especially the most we could get out of this before this becomes a risky activity. Uh, if we compare the contraction in the biceps to something like doing a pull up or doing um, a preacher curl or, or a biceps curl or something like that. Now, I don't care if, if you don't like lifting weights, that's fine. I'm just trying to show you the ends of a spectrum here. You don't have to lift weights. That's that's perfectly fine. But I just want you, I want you to see two really classic examples of how to really put force in the bicep to force the bicep to get strong. Longer. And when we compare that to these yoga examples, they're just laughably inadequate, right? The Yeah, these do technically use your biceps, but it's so um, minute. The, the effects on the biceps are very, very, very little compared to other much more effective strategies for training your biceps. So it doesn't have to be pull-ups. It doesn't have to be bicep curls. It doesn't have to be those things. But I want you to start thinking that if you're not really training your biceps, then uh, how can you do it? You know, it, do you, can you do it in yoga or do you have to maybe consider doing some other activities outside of yoga? And I would encourage you to cross train. I would encourage you not to be a specialist, not to simply do yoga. I would encourage you to do lots of different kinds of activities for a well-rounded human body. Um, so as a reminder here, basically when we zoom out and we look at the big picture here, the big picture is that yoga is great at upper body pushing. We're really good at using our front body muscles, our chest, our anterior delta, Toids or serratus, chaturangas, our crow poses or plank poses, right? Um, you know, our, our arm balances also are going to use a lot of our chest muscles. So, and shoulder muscles, right? But we don't use our back muscles. Um, but so yoga is really great at upper body pushing, but it is terrible at upper, upper body 
pulling. It is just really not good at upper body pulling. So um, I didn't throw it in this PowerPoint, but another uh, option that you can use for um, upper body pulling is because we're trying to train our back muscles. So the back muscles is, uh, you know, you can lay down on the on the ground and do basically supermans or you can do I's, T's and Y's um, where you basically lift off your arms from the ground in various positions with your face uh, facing down on the ground. That's another good way to do it. Um, so there are ways to start to incorporate more pulling types of activities in yoga, but as it is in modern postural yoga in most yoga classes, yoga does an absolutely terrible job of pulling, but we do a really good job of the other side of the spectrum. And if yoga is trying to teach us balance, then I would encourage you to have balance both mentally and also physically in your practice if you're doing a physical yoga practice. So thank you for watching. Uh, please comment if you have other suggestions for how to enhance your yoga practice with more pulling activities, or if you disagree with me, please, uh, I'll respond to you in the comments and I will do it respectfully. So uh, please uh, comment there, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.